Okay. So what I'm going to talk to you today uh, about is NFC tags. This is this new little toy I've been playing around with, and I was told it would be a 10-minute maximum presentation. If I had known I was going to stretch it out a little bit longer, I would have went more in depth. But here it is. NFC tags. Has anybody heard NFC? RFID? These terms are kind of used interchangeably. Uh, but for the uninitiated, these are in your credit cards. Uh, if we have any UVA employees in here, they're probably in your badge, in your phones, in your uh, pet microchips, in your um, casino chips. Some casinos are putting them in there so they can deactivate stolen chips. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to start with the first parent technology, RFID, Radio Frequency Identification. And the goal is simple. We want to transfer information via radio waves. Right? Now the structure is fairly simple as well. You'll have an RFID reader, which is controlled by a computer or third party, it doesn't have to be a computer, a reader and an antenna, which create a geographical zone. And then you'll have transponders, which are free to move within or in and out of that zone, and they'll ping back and forth. They'll talk to each other. They can be active or passive, and what that means is that you can have an active transponder, battery powered, and a passive reader. And what, what that setup is going to do for you is our transponder is going to be pinging out information, and the reader is just going to read it. You can flip it. You can have an active reader just sending out inqui uh, inquisitor signals to the transponder, or you can have them both be activated. But this right here is going to be mobile, so it's probably going to be battery powered. Um, your bands. Pretty wide band there. You're going to be anywhere from 120 to 150 kilohertz all the way up to your microwave bands. Likewise, your range 10 centimeters to 200 meters. So about the size of a warehouse. You're not going to get statewide with it. It may be worth noting that there's probably a loose correlation with your data transfer speeds. Uh, for example, your microwave, you're going to have a larger footprint and better transfer speeds. Uh, the really cool thing about this is that it does not need line of sight. So you'll see in a minute, I can read right through this box right here. I can read right through plastic. I can read right through walls with RFID technology. It's great for toll roads. If you guys have ever seen those little transponders you can buy for your car and you zoom through the easy pass. Warehouse management, retail inventory, we probably all set off one of those alarms. Um, when the meter guy comes by and reads your meter without getting out of the car, that's what he's doing. And of course, casinos, which we've already mentioned. I have a question on those little toll readers. Sure. I never have had to change the battery in it. Or is that just passive? It probably is passive. I'm not sure which one you have, but probably passive. Uh, but we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about NFC <laughs> text. Near field communication. Um, this is it's a very general statement. It can generally be thought of as a smaller more focused subset of RFID uh, with a few distinct differences. One, it's a peer-to-peer -peer model. All right? So if you have a phone and a watch, you can share information. You want to share contacts, you can do that. A tag, which I'm going to show you right here, this can be thought of as a transponder as well. Uh, another phone, you can, it's a peer-to-peer -peer network between all these. And I should have came up with a better graphic, but I want to point this out. If this phone connects with this dedicated reader, it does not see everything behind it. It's only single point connection. So, single connection. The RFID may have multiple connections. You may have a zone uh, in a warehouse, for example, that wants to track multiple packages. That's not going to happen with NFC. So, where are these used? Video games? Does anybody else in here play Nintendo? All right, so that just about everybody, right? Uh, the Nintendo Switch uh, uses these right here for their uh, video games. Mobile payments, we've all seen the commercials where somebody taps their phone to the readers. Car keys, can't start your car until you get your key close enough to the reader. So does everybody have a good grasp on the structure of this? Pretty simple stuff. How it works, just like RFID. You're not going to notice many differences there. Um, everybody here is familiar with how it works radio waves works. Uh, short range. You're not going to get more than a few centimeters off of this before it stops working. Only on 13.56 megahertz. That's it. The RFID had that big, 
huge uh, band change that you can get to, not this. And of course the structure again, it's worth noting, you have to have two components, an active and a passive. If you have two passive components, it doesn't work. If you have one active and one uh, passive, it does work. Uh, so how does this work with a watch and a phone? Well, one of them always works as a tag. One of them always works as a passive receiving tag. Uh, so if you're sharing contacts between two phones, one of them's receiving, the other one's sending, and they flip. Make sense? Simple stuff. So this is a tag, and I know you guys can't see it. If I hold it up to the light, you can actually see this grid right in there. Um, as I've said, integrated circuit, or as I've said, it's passive. It's an integrated circuit powered by electromagnetic induction. I made the mistake of thinking I was going to put one of these near a magnet. Guess what? Doesn't work. Everybody here knows why, right? Because the electromagnetic induction doesn't work well with magnets. No power source required. That makes this really fun to play around with, really easy to hide. Unfortunately, it does have some shortcomings. Limited memory, just about a string of text with it. You're not going to get much more. Uh, and limited range. Like I said before, a few centimeters, about an inch maximum, maybe a little bit better. And um, we're not going to get too far in depth with this. There are five different types with various models ranging in capacity. Type 1 and 2 are typically the cheapest, single-use kind of um, throwaway stuff. Types 3 and 4 come with the ability for encryption, if that's important to you. Of course, they cost a little bit more, too. And then Type 5 is the latest and greatest, um, and I don't know much about it. All of these are a standard. So if you buy uh, one model, to work with one reader, any other model tag that you get from any other <coughs> manufacturer, so long as that right model, it's going to work with that reader. So everything's standardized. This right here that I'm holding in my hand is an NTAG, NTAG215. There are several different models. Don't get caught up on that. That's just what works with the Nintendo, so that's what I bought. Um, for this one, it's a Type 2. <laughs> Your memory capacity is 540 bytes. 504 bytes usable. You have to allow for um, initiation, protocol headers, and record IDs, that sort of thing. But you can get about 490 characters of text on that. Uh, it does have a scan counter, which is uh, kind of a cool feature. I haven't really figured out a way to use it yet, but uh, it counts how many times you've scanned it. Uh, the data transfer of this particular one, 106 kilobits per second. Uh, 50 picofarads input capacity for those geeks out there. And it's rewritable. So they're relatively cheap, but you can use them for multiple uses. Um, it can be locked. If you want to slap this on a business card and put your URL on there or whatever, you don't want to give out your business card and have people rewrite it. You want to, to lock it, and that's what makes this kind of cool. Uh, this is going to be readable by any newer Android or iPhone 7 Plus, I think, on the iPhone. If anybody out there wants to correct me, feel free to. So, why am I showing you this? Well, I, I, it's, yeah, it's a radio wave and uh, we're radio club. It's pretty much all the phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think it's cool. I think a lot of us could benefit. I use it kind of like a virtual post-it note. So this is my arts, craft supplies box and I don't always know what I have in here, but you can see them up there. And if I want to know what's in here, I'll just take my phone and I'll place it right around here. And it tells me everything that's in there. If I want to take that information and look at uh, variables, it gives me a chart. I can tell how much I have in there or, or what it costs to put that in there. Um, other uses I've found for them, I've got one on my truck dashboard. I'll just lay my phone up there. It'll hit Google Maps, give me the traffic information, give me an estimated time of arrival, and then text my wife. So I don't have to text her while I'm driving, I just stick the phone up there and go. Now what do they cost typically? You said not much. Not much. They're eh, 40 to 50, depending on which supply you get, about 40 to 50 cent oh, a piece. <laughs> um, these right here, these little keychains, you can buy these for about a dollar. These are 3D printed. I 3D print them, stop about halfway through and sandwich it in there and, and keep it going. Um, I've got one in my nightstand. I lay my phone down, it interfaces as the trigger and uh, Tells Google Home Assistant to start my good night routine. So it starts dimming the lights, 
starts turning the TV off, turning the ringers off, all that great stuff, right? The great thing about this being useful as a trigger is you can do anything with it after that. The horrible thing about me having these is I don't have a great imagination. So that's where I want to turn it over to you guys and hopefully get some ideas. And I've brought a couple with me. Anybody who is here is welcome to grab one of these if you want to play with it. An Android phone and, or an iPhone, or you can buy a dedicated reader. There, it takes nothing to get into this. And if you're wondering how, you know, how hard it is to, to do this or what uses you might have, well, can everybody see the band plan? What if you want to know weather conditions or what if you want to know radio conditions? Well, right there it is, real-time band conditions. So maybe you stick one of these in a keychain. They got a little sticky back. Maybe you want to peel it and stick it right there on the corner of your computer or right there on the corner of your radio. The sky's the limit. Now you have to program them, right? I'll show you exactly how to program. It's very easy to program. You won't be able to see it because it's on the phone, but if I want to copy a tag, I'll open up the Play Store and download whatever app you want to get There are a hundred different NFC tag apps. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'll program, one, I'll program one right in front of you. So let me find exactly what I want. Here's the app I use. This is NFC Tools Pro. It's a 99 cent app. And if I want to write it, let's say I want to copy a tag. I can copy. Text copied and under the green. That tag is written. That's it. So there's, there's really nothing to it. On the back end is where you're going to find all of your uh, fun stuff to do with it. I've just been tending to think of them as a trigger. I'm sure there's a lot of other stuff we can do with it. So here they are. Do my work for me. Are there any questions? Chip? Can you overwrite that chip again? Absolutely can. As long as you don't lock it, you can rewrite it it's somewhere to the tune of about eight or nine thousand writes. It's going to wear out. Like the old CD that's, a, that's a software lock. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how the lock works. I'm pretty sure there. It has to be a software lock. It has to be something in the header to get sent over. Anything else? Uh, sure. Yeah, one, of the, uh, I, one of the places I've seen this, the other hobby I do is radio controlled airplanes. Oh, so yeah. what guys do is they put them on their batteries and then they can keep track of charge, how many times they've been charged and discharged. That's a really cool idea. And then that way they can get a history on them and they can even pull information out of their chargers and that sort of thing all related to it. So that scan count would be perfect. I was right. I've been thinking about putting them on Christmas decoration boxes in the garage. That's so much better than yeah, mine. I, yeah, I imagine the same thing for <coughs> ham radio. I mean, for the guys who do the handy talkies and you're cycling your batteries, or yeah, sure. you're doing a lot of battery cycling. Sure, it makes sense. Yes. Hey, uh, is that what this chip is? Do it should be. It should be. It should say NFC on it or something like that. Or so, so that, that, that's near your phone, or you transfer all my money to you. The, <laughs> the chip. The chip is actually a little bit, uh, a little bit different. It's um. It is an RFID, uh, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on it, but it is a proprietary system. It's not a standard so far as the public goes. Um, if you see people waving their phone around your wallet, maybe take notice of it. <laughs> but it is a lot more secure. It's not as easy to get into it as you might think. But actually, uh, it's a passive type of system. Then. It should be, yes. Okay. Anybody well, else? With. I was wondering, do you, do you know which... Um, like when we're volunteering for the races and things, and, and runners have that chip that's on their shoe, do you know what type of chip that would be? Is that this type? Or is that I, I don't. I, I've never seen the chip, but I would imagine that would have you know, some sort of uh, applicable use there. Yeah, those, those are, are, those are, are They have a lot longer range. Yeah. So sorry, RFID would be perfect for that. You have, what you can do with RFID if you have one reader, you can have multiple points. Um, so, you know, if you have a, a warehouse, you wouldn't want something like this, but if you want to back a van in and read every package in that van with an RFID chip to it, then that would be perfect. I was speaking, we, we make disaster trauma kits and things like that for emergencies. People buy these things and they put them in a closet for five years and forget that stuff expires. So is this the kind of thing that maybe we could put either chips on individual components 
or maybe we could put a master chip on a kit, and then when they bring their phone up to it, it could at least either take them to a web page, or it could say, okay, well, these things expire uh, at this year, and this year, and sure, this year. Sure, sure. Well, that's, that's exactly what I do with this box right here. It gives me a, a date. Uh, everything in here has got a date on it. Five years is actually a pretty long time uh, to be looking at any technology, so I would wonder in five years what kind of technology will be out there to replace it. I think in your case it may just be a simple matter of, of uh, cost benefit. They're not, you know, they're, they're not expensive by any means, but yeah. at, you know, at 50 cent uh, tag, roughly, that could add up kind of. Well, it's a nice value added thing. But we get, we get customers that call us up from 12 years ago and say, you know that thing that you made for me? Sure. Um, it was custom and you only made three of them? Uh, could you give me that list again? Because I need to, you know. <laughs> sure, um, sure. You know, so anything like that, I think maybe could be, that, that could be used. I, I would say, too, I, I imagine that most commercial enterprises are finding a full source for these, and they're probably a lot cheaper than what I'm ballparking out there. What I, the price I give you is just going on Amazon and finding 20 of them. Um, if you order from, especially some of the Chinese suppliers, if you get the right thing, you're going to get a better deal. But you said they're like 40 or 50 cents, right? Yeah, 40 or 50 cents. Okay, yeah, I can that. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yes. So how does the encryption work on the chips? Uh, these are type 2. They don't support encryption. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. That would be a good thing to read up on. Sorry, I don't have an answer for you. Anybody else know? What was the question? Uh, what is the encryption on the chips like? You, you can get it get them encrypted, it'll cost you about three times as much. Anybody else? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Just background information, I work in this field and I represent inventors in this field. And the original inventor of the original RFID was a guy named Mario Padulo, who lives in Washington, D.C., who I know pretty well. <coughs> done some work for him. But the reason I'm bringing it up, he was nominated uh, recently uh, to be inducted into the Patent Office Hall of Fame and he's also been nominated for his invention of the RFID technology to be moved up into the top 100 inventions of all time. Now whether he actually uh, gets there, we'll see. It hasn't happened for another year and a half. But it's that little background information. The guy still alive, lives in Washington, and he just got his Ph.D. at age 74. <laughs> Never too late. <laughs> so, in your green box, uh, you have multiple things in that box, right? Each of this tag? Independent, yes. About so, 50, huh? So, there are 10 by 10, there are 100 RFI, or NFC tags in that box? Two. Okay, so how does it tell you everything that's in the box and how long it's been in there? And how many of it there is? I'll go there right now. And I'll show you that right here. If I want to go to, I know you guys are going to have a hard time seeing it. I can barely see it. But there are options up here, read, write, other. If I write, you know, I want to add a record, I can add text, right? And I'll type in you know, whatever I want to type. And I get an option to write. So if I write, you know, I have uh, sewing needles in here, then that's it. So what I put in here, I write here, I write a date on it. It's similar to, a, like I said, a virtual post-it note. If you ever change your oil on your car and you write your mileage down, it's going to be the so same thing. So, so you're writing the inventory to the tag? Right. Okay, got it. Got it. Got it. It's, it's, in that case, it's no different than just getting a Sharpie marker and writing it on top. Um, what you can do, if you, if you get uh, to the back end, which it's all on the phone by that point, you can read from one tag and put that information with another tag. But when you deplete your inventory, you have to go back and update your record, correct? That's it's correct. It's not automatically. That's correct. Not automatic. But, but again, the record is in the is in the tag. It's not on your phone. That's correct. Right. You're not That's storing right. it on your phone. You are storing that data in the tag. The data is on the tag. Remember that you're limited by that very small amount of space. If you want to store larger amounts, what you can do is use this device as a trigger to pull up a larger file, maybe a, a photo, maybe a PDF, and you can use that to pull up that uh, information on your phone. So, for example, with the real-time conditions, that information is not stored on the tag. 
there was a command stored on the tag to bring up a certain website. And then that website loads with that information. Um, so does it save you much time? Yeah, a few seconds. Most of you probably already have the site bookmarked anyway. Uh, but I'm all about over engineering simple stuff. <laughs> are there apps that will work with laptops or it strictly could be used for, with smartphones? You should find the, uh, apps that will work with it. Uh, at that point, you may want to have a dedicated reader for that tag. Oh, yeah, you need it. Um, you need a reader. If, it depends on what you're doing with it. If you're just playing around with it like I am, I think your phone is probably that <laughs> sample. Uh, I don't know how much money you want to put into it for a play tool. Yeah. Now we know when you see these ads, Never not be able to find your car keys again. Yeah. For twenty nine ninety five. That's just one of those little gadgets. Uh, absolutely. They they, they absolutely make those. It's just an active, you know, it's an active pain on a certain frequency and then you point around to it. That will so. help people with dementia. <laughs> <laughs> well, so yeah, I know. <coughs> depending on depending on which one of those you go for, I've got I've got the brand called Tile. This this is not NFC or RFID or Bluetooth, uh, and the, because you want greater range. You know, if you if you can't remember where you put your keys down, uh, it doesn't do you any good if you've got to be within uh, two inches in order to, to find your keys. So uh, so it depends on on which technology you're talking about. Um, the, uh, so I have always been assuming, without having actually looked into it, that when I use my iPhone to pay for stuff, when I use Apple Pay, um, that that was NFC. But I just looked, I've got a, a, an iPhone 6S and, and I don't have NFC in my iPhone. So what technologies that work with, with that? Oh, good question. Um, that, that can't be NFC <laughs> because uh, my phone doesn't do NFC. I have no idea. Um, I don't know. There's got to be some sort of... I know there's a difference between like Samsung where they'll work with any card reader versus um, Apple Pay. There may be some sort of proprietary stuff going on there. But I, I believe it works with a 7 Plus. I'm not entirely sure. So double check. The, I just did a quick Google. It says, yeah, 7 and later have, uh, have NFC built in. Sure. You, uh, you mentioned like smart devices. Um, I think it was your Amazon device. Um, but would it be possible to have it so when you tap the tag, it automatically orders something, like a little paper? <laughs> you don't have kids, do you? <laughs> <laughs> you? You absolutely could. One, once you start playing with this, you realize that all it does is send a command. All you want to do is trigger something. So if you can set that up on the back end, you can do whatever you want. There's an incredibly powerful app for Android phones called Tasker. And um, it, it's really this amazing app. You can track your fingerprint. So any command that you can think of entering in on your phone, whether it's tapping or typing or sending, you can do it. The, at that point, the tag would be a very small part of that process. So, but a part nonetheless. Everybody happy? So unfortunately, my phone doesn't have NFC um, yet. Maybe my next one will. But one of the problems is you, I said like a lock screen, so it, you know, it turns off in a minute or two and then you gotta fill around, put in a password or fingerprint sure. or something like that. Sure. But if you had one of those NFC chips like on your desk, you could just leave it laying on there and it would know it's in a safe place and it would not go into the screen lock thing. I think there are better ways to set that up. Okay. Um, within Android, uh, I'm more familiar with it, but I think there are better ways to, to keep that unlocked rather than using this because you're constantly going to be pushing out power to power that uh, passive device. I suppose you could do it. I'm not sure how it would work. Um, I can tell you that the technology used here is not too different. The, the induction part is not too different than the wireless charging solutions that we see in a lot of yeah. uh, solutions. Uh, I don't know if you really want to use that for that purpose. Okay. But I suppose it's possible. Sure. Can your tag read through metal? Or does it have to be plastic? It can read through metal, but you're, you're going to notice that just like anything else, um, 
never asked a question in this hobby where the answer didn't start with it depends. So the more uh, the more obstacles you put between it, the harder time you're going to have with it. If you're pushing it through tenfold, yeah. shouldn't have a problem. But you're going to notice distortion a lot quicker with that. And at that point, you're not only going to read the record wrong, it just may stop working entirely. So I wouldn't press the limits of it. Yeah, I was thinking about perhaps uh, locating one inside an HT or perhaps inside the cover of your mobile rig in case one day. Any, anybody, I mean, pretty much some of the serial numbers now just get a little Lysol, a little lighter fluid, and the serial sure. number's gone. I would imagine so. Um, hmm. I, you know, I think with kind of the, the overarching technology being used for the microchips and vets, I think it makes perfect sense. Uh, try it. Some right here. Try it. Take some home with you and give it a shot. I will. Anybody else? Just to answer his question, uh, iPhone does use NFC. Um, I found an article because I was reading about this the other day. I use I use my phone and my Apple Watch constantly uh, to pay for stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that the iPhone six uses NFC or the iPhone I've, 7? I've got a seven plus. I just looked it up on Goggle on the Intar web, and it said that the six and the six plus both have NFC because I thought so because. This yeah. is a seven plus, and my six plus had it. That yeah, it says it says right here, Apple Pay uses NFC chip in conjunction with Touch ID fingerprint verification, tokenization, and embedded problem. secure element to process payment transactions. All right, well, thanks, Bob. Appreciate you making a fool of me. Thanks. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, that's exactly why I bring it here because I always learn something about it. Even though I don't use iPhone, it's nice to that. So when you get your credit cards now, they've got a little chip in them, mm -hmm. and then when you get a new credit card, well, generally you cut it up and you throw it away, but the chip's in there. I wouldn't worry about that too much because it's killed on the back end, too. Um, even in the days of just strictly numbers, they would kill a number the same way. Uh, I think I would use due diligence with it. I'd you know, exercise caution, but I wouldn't worry about it. I was thinking about putting it in the microwave for 10 seconds until it sparked and then it... <laughs> Then you have a reason to use your new credit card. Can you just cut the chip? Yeah, I have to buy that new microwave. Yeah. Just to yeah. All right. Make sure it's in and crank up the 300 watts. Thank you.